Happy Tuesday to you. Glad to see you. And jump on everybody. Come on in. Come on in. We are going to have a great study today. And I can't wait to see you right there joining me. So I'm going to let some people jump on. I am still out of town and we'll be coming back tomorrow. And I am excited. I got a great cup of hot tea with the honey, green tea. And I have all my fluids. I have my water, my hot drink, my cold drink. Y'all know how I feel about having all of my stuff around me. How are you doing, everybody? Are you we good on YouTube? Are we good on Facebook? Hi, sweetie. Hi, 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 everyone. Come on in. You guys are jumping on. I'm going to go on my other pages and share this. So give me just a minute. I'm going to share a few other places, and then we'll get rocking. I'm happy to see you. Come on in. Hi, Linda. Am I going to see you Thursday? I sure hope so. I think I owe you a phone call. Hmm. Saying your name reminds me. Kelly, I think, wanted me to call you. Anyway, reach out to me later if you want to. Hi, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. I want you to uh, share this on your Facebook page. I'm going to go on my different pages and share it right now. And then we'll get rocking. Can you believe it's September 14th already? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We are... Flying through September. And y'all know that September, the fall, is my favorite season of the whole wide world. I love it so much. I love it so much. Okay, why am I not seeing this? Uh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello, Lori. Is it Milliken? I don't know that I know you. I'm glad you're watching today. Thank you. Do I know you? Maybe tell me where we met. Tell me where you're from. I'd love to know where people are watching from. And just hold on, y'all. I'm trying to find this on my laptop. Good morning. Good morning to you. And I love when you talk back to me, everybody. You too. Hi, Liz. Oh, you know what? Today, uh, Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hey, Cheryl. Hello, hello, hello. I'm glad you're there. Um, my producer is out of town and she is not unable to send the notes. So for those of you who love the notes, I want to tell you that we're going to study the word today, but you're not going to have your notes. We are in Colossians 2. And I apologize for that. That's a, a very odd thing. Actually, it's never happened before, ever. So today is a day that we are not good. You're not going to have notes, but we're going to learn the word and we're going to study the word and have a great time together. So give me just a moment. I'm still trying to share this on different pages and we're going to get started. So grab your Bible, turn to, uh, turn to Colossians 2, because that's where we're going to be. I am staying with some friends out of town, and that's why it looks different. I'm not in my kitchen, so I am in a kitchen, but not my kitchen, and that's why it feels and looks different, but I'm coming back to Minnesota tomorrow, and I met you when we were kids. I live in Mankato now. Terrific. Well, then thank you for uh, being in love in our family since we were kids. I love it so much. And thanks for, for tuning in today, Lori. And keep joining me because we have a great time in these studies. Um, guys, I'm just trying to find this broadcast. My laptop is being a little goofy. Give me just a second. We are going to rock and roll here super soon. Super soon, super soon, super soon. There it is. It was way down. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'm ready to go now in like 30 seconds. Give me two seconds. There we go. And one more, and then we're going to rock and roll. We're going to be ready to do our receiving prayer. To, to declare, to declare 
uh, yeah, they. I'll have. I'll. I'll get them sent later, Linda. Linda just said, "Will the notes be sent later?" Uh, Liz will send the notes when she can, so you can go back and fill them in if you want. But just get a notepad, get a get a piece of paper, and get your Bible because you're going to learn something. We're, we always learn when we open the Word of God. And I apologize for that, but sometimes things happen, right? Got one more place to share, and then we're going to hit it. Oh, I love you guys. I've been listening to worship music all morning and just praising God. You know, there's a song uh, that C.C. Winans does. Uh, actually, a lot of people do it. It's called The Goodness of God. Uh, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Wow. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Woo! Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. I love C.C. Winans so much, but man, that song has been blessing me. The goodness of God. Isn't God been good to you? He's so good and he's so faithful and he's so kind and he's so pursuing us and wanting us to grow and to talk to him and know him and love him. And I don't know, that song just has been really, really blessing me. So let's get ready to do our receiving prayer. Please put your hands out like this. YouTube, Facebook, put your hands out like this. And let's say this together. Say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, today I am a receiver. My mind is alert. I have the mind of Christ. I'm awake. I'm alert. And my spirit is ready to receive from the Holy Spirit. Today, I will learn of the word of God. And I will be changed because the word changes me. The word builds my faith. I am a child of God. I will fulfill my assignment today. I will share the blessing and the love of Jesus everywhere I go. Because everywhere I go, I carry the presence of another world. I am an agent of the Almighty. I am an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. And I will live and think and speak as the ambassador I am for Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. That's it. We're ready to go now. So please turn in your Bibles to Colossians 2. Colossians 2. And we are going to get rocking in verse 8. Here we go. Ooh, the word will work for you when you are thrilled with it. Don't you love that quote by uh, Kenneth Hagin? The word will work for you when you are thrilled with it. Are you thrilled with the word of God? The word of God is so powerful. It's so wonderful. And it renews our mind and it refreshes our understanding so that today, every challenge that you have, listen, our world is gone officially off the rails. And unless you have the word to hold you strong, this word is the anchor of our soul. This word is the anchor of our mind. This word is what we, our foundation. This is our rock. This is what we stand on. We speak it. We sing it. We pray it. We believe it. We shout it. And this is what's going to hold us through these storms of life. Because everything that can be shaken is being shaken right now. And the, the Lord is doing a great work in this world. And I believe, I believe with all my heart, as dark as the dark is getting, that God has already begun to unleash this last third great final awakening in our world. I believe it. I see little fires, fires and some big fires. And eventually that fire, those fires are going to come together and we are going to have that third great and final revival, not just in, the, in America or the United States, but in the world before the rapture happens. So I want to be on the front end of that. I don't want to be left out. I don't want to be left behind. I, I want to be right in the center of it. How about you? It's a very exciting place to be. So no fear over here, friends. Please say that with me. I got the hat. I got the shirt. You need to order one. No fear over here. 
No fear over here. We are not to be afraid. We do not worry about anything. Instead, we what? Pray about everything. We cast our cares on the Lord. So right here at the beginning of the study, if you are carrying some burdens today, carrying some challenges today, I encourage you to start shouting, to get the word of God in your mouth, declare victory over that challenge. And you're going to get some tools in the word of God today in this study to help you do that. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Colossians 2, 8. I love this verse. I actually preached on this just a few weeks ago. Here's what the apostle Paul says, writing from prison in Rome. He's in a dungeon in prison. It's not like our fancy federal and state prisons today that have TVs and microwaves. Oh no. He's in a dungeon in shackles, in chains. He is writing this from prison to the church in Colossae. Verse eight says this, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sound nonsense. <laughs> don't you love that translation? That's the uh, NLT version. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. What a great verse. Now we're going to study this. Out. We're going to go deep on this verse. All right. So here it is. In a different translation, it says, see to it that you are not captured. See to it. See to it. Here is here what you put in your notes, uh, just in your, in your pad, in your notepad that you have to take notes today. The, it's the Greek word blepo, B-L-E-P-O. The phrase see to it in Greek is the Greek word blepo, B-L-E-P-O. And guess what it means? It means to look out, beware, watch out, take heed. Take note, be aware of. All right? So Paul is saying, look out, beware, watch out, take heed, take note, be aware of anyone that attempts to capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. Boy, do we have a lot of high-sounding nonsense in our world today, in the news today, in our culture today. It's just getting more nonsensical every second. It is actually insane. The things being said at the highest level in our nation, high sounding nonsense. Paul's saying, don't let anyone capture you. Don't let any empty philosophy capture you that comes from human thinking for this or and the spiritual powers of this world. See, there are spiritual powers of the kingdom of God the kingdom of light and their spiritual powers of the kingdom of darkness. So today and every day, our job is to stay tapped in to those spiritual powers that will take us up, not down. All right. So see to it, look out, beware, take heed that you're not captured by anything or anyone. Paul is teaching against this philosophy of life based only in human ideas and experiences. Paul is saying, Hey, See, he's not teaching against philosophy because Paul was a great philosopher. He's not saying philosophy is bad. What he's saying is empty philosophy is truth, not grounded in truth in God's word. It's not philosophy, it's empty philosophy. See, empty philosophy is produced by human thinking and intellect, and you can never think your way to God. Your intellect, you can't, you can't philosophize. Is that a word? Philosophize your way to God. The only way to Jesus, the only way to Christ is to submit and surrender your heart, your spirit. That is how we make our way to God. And that's the language of God is the language of our heart, the language of faith. Faith is voice activated. We unleash God's kingdom in our life when we speak faith, when we speak the words of God, when we pray the words of God, we are unleashing the kingdom on behalf of those challenges in our life. So empty philosophy is truth, not grounded in truth in God's word. This world has some good ideas, but God has great ideas. God has the true Jesus way is the way, the truth and the life. There's so many ways, so many religions, so many leaders, so many philosophies, so many, go to a Barnes and Noble bookstore and you'll see 
thousands and thousands of books of do this, think that, go there, try this. Everybody trying to get you on board with their idea. Friends, the only idea, the only truth that's going to set us free is the truth from this word, the truth of Jesus. It's fun to study all kinds of stuff, but it's just human intellect. I love to read. I love to read all kinds of things, but this is the truth. This is the word of God is where my life is anchored. It is anchored. Our culture and human intellect have many ways to solve problems that are completely apart from God, the one who made us. I'll use an example. I talk to a lot of people. I coach a lot of people. I'm a disciple maker. I'm a, I'm a leader that, that trains other leaders to train other leaders. Um, very often I meet with people that go, well, yeah, I got counseling and I went to a therapist. I'm like, well, are they a Christian? Because if they're not a Christian, they're giving you human good ideas, but they're never ideas that are going to take you to the root and to the truth because only Jesus and the God can heal those root issues, can get to the bottom of what's really going on in our lives. You know why? Because he's the one who made us. God made us. And this is the owner's manual. This word, Jesus is the word. Jesus is the truth. This word is our the owner's manual of Londa. It's the owner's manual of you, Lori, of you, Cheryl, of you, Sheree. Hi, Sheree. Of you, Pamela. Of you, Liz. It's the owner's manual of us. And so if something gets broken in us, if you want to have great maintenance of us, this is the book that tells us how to do it. This is the book that is the truth that we anchor our lives in, not empty philosophy, not empty high sounding nonsense. No, we consult the owner's manual. Now, verse, we're still in verse eight of Colossians two, if you're just joining. Be awake, there's the word, be awake to not allow anything or anyone to take you captive except Christ. Many people today are being taken captive by fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. And friend, if you are someone that worries a lot, is anxious, has anxiety, has trouble sleeping at night, you got to take that, you got to take that spirit captive. Because the Bible tells us we've not been given the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. So if you have trouble sleeping at night, man, pray that's over yourself. I will not fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but I have power. I have power to live a victorious life. I have a sound mind. I have a mind that is alert and awake and anchored in truth. Pray that over yourself because our world is, 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 is falling apart. And, and if we're tapped into the voices of this world more than the voice of God, we're going to be afraid. We're going to be filled with fear and anxiety. And that is not what God has for us. We are to be filled with the word of God. We are to be filled with the spirit of God. We're to be filled with the truth of God. that passes all human understanding. So be awake to not allow anything or anyone. Does, is someone, is there a person in your life that when they call, you just get all worked up? Is there... A certain thing, maybe it's finances or a health stuff. What is it that that just gets you out of peace? What is it that takes you out of living in power and strength? I want you to identify that. What is it? Is it someone or is it something? Think about that and go, Holy Spirit, help me to bring that to the cross. Help me to bring that to the cross. Help me to cast that care, that challenge, that person, that situation. That, that deep thing that maybe nobody even knows about. Help me to bring that to you, Lord, and leave it there and then trust you and proclaim victory. Proclaim that I will not be afraid. I refuse to worry. I refuse to be confused. Remember, y'all, you, if you've heard me speak for a while, you know that's written in my Bible. I refuse to be confused. Please say that with me. I refuse to be confused. I might not know something, but I know the person who knows everything. 
And if I'm confused about anything or if I'm struggling with what to do or what decision to make, guess what? All that means is that I need to spend time with the guy who knows everything. And that's Jesus. I need to spend time with my father and go, Lord, this is what's going on. What do I do here? What do I do here? What do I say here? How do I handle the scenario? Because you might, you don't know everything. I don't know everything, but we know the person who does know everything. And so all we got to do is spend time with the guy who knows everything. God knows everything concerning you. He knows everything concerning your kids. He knows everything considering your future. So if you're, if you're not sure about something, what you need to do is just spend more time with the guy who knows everything in prayer, in his word. Because remember, this is the owner's manual of you. The Bible is the owner's manual of you. In this book is everything you need to win, everything you need to forgive, everything you need to succeed in life, in finances, in your marriage, in your family, right here. So be awake to not allow anything or anyone to take you captive except Christ. It's Christ that has hold of me. And I have hold of him. Londa in Jesus. Jesus in Londa. That's what you lay hold of. Because when you lay hold of Christ, you lay hold of everything he has. Everything in the kingdom for you. Now, verse 9 says, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Paul says, in Christ lives, exists, all the fullness of God in a human body. All of God was in Christ's human body. Have you ever thought about that? All of God. Everything God has was in the human body of Jesus Christ. And here's the great news, that when we submit and surrender our lives to Christ, when our spirit switch turns on, we go from death to life. We have everything we need to win in life and have victory. God wants you to win, not fail. God wants you to succeed, not succumb to the pressures of this world. God wants you to fly, not die. He wants you to, he wants you to fly high in him, in his truth, in his ways, in the dreams that God's put in your heart. He wants you to win. But that's going to be tested every day by the enemy of your soul. You have an enemy of your soul that wants you to die. So you got to be very awake. What and who is trying to take my peace? What and who is trying to steal my joy? What and who is trying to get me in fear instead of faith? And take that captive. Bring it under the authority of Christ. Because everything God has, he gave to Jesus. And everything God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit have is given to us. When we are born again, that spirit light comes on. And we are born again. And, and we have been deposited in us, is deposited everything we need to win. And have victory, even in these dark days. Even in these days of evil where it feels like everyone is being torn apart and there's just so much fragmentation and disagreement on everything from the vaccine to who to vote for. By the way, if you live in California or know someone in California, it better be at the polls today to vote for Larry Elder. Okay? That state needs someone that is based in truth, not lies. Okay? It's not about politics, it's about the government of God. And Larry Elder is a constitutional sound thinker. I might not agree with 100%, but let me tell you, it's way closer to the truth of this word than, than the other guy, okay? So if you know anybody in California, you get on the horn with them. Put it on your vote for Elder. He is someone who honors God and believes in religious freedom and believes in the sanctity of human life things that are embraced by the word of God. We need a miracle in our nation, but it will only happen as God's people. The answer is not going to come through God's, the people that don't walk with God. The answer all through this word, the miracles always came in and through the people of God. 
It is the people of God waking up to what time it is to seek his face, to be bold about truth, to say God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Truth is the answer. But we must take back what we've let the enemy steal. See, it's Christians who are supposed to be the leaders in government. Christians, the leaders in education. Christians, the leaders in medicine. Christians, the leaders in finance. It's God's people that are to have to own and take authority in all of these domains that many times we've just given up and let, let the government take over or let ungodly people take over. We are the head and not the tail. God brings his miracles through the ecclesia, through the church. Who is the church? We are the church. I'm the church. You're the church. If you're a son or daughter of the king. So you're complete through your union with Christ. Verse 10. So you are also complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Now, here it is. When we are completely in Christ and under, say in and under, write that down. Write that down right by that verse in your Bible. I must be in and I must be under. You must be in Christ and under his authority. In Christ, under his authority. Who's the boss of you? Have you ever heard someone say or newsome has got to go? You're so right, Carol. Amen to that. In Jesus' name, I pray that every person that stands in truth in the state of California will go to the polls today. Oh, God, we need a miracle. Shake your people. Shake people to understand that, that the evil that is, is, is being done to that state that is happening under this ungodly ruler and, and authority, must we must have someone who is under the authority of God. So God, do the miracle. Shake your people. Shake every, may every professing Christian vote today and get their friends to go vote. There's got to be a shift and change. We pray this in Jesus' name. Would you agree with me on that? Wow. We must be in and under. Please write that in your Bible, right alongside of verse 10. So you also are complete through your union with Christ. There's being in Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Have you ever heard kids say, you're not the boss of me? Guess what? God's the boss of me. God is the boss of me. We must be in Christ and under his authority. In and under is the place. Here it is. When we are in Christ and under his authority, we are safe and protected by all of heaven. Ooh, don't you want to be safe and protected by all of the kingdom of heaven? In and under, in and under, in and under. That's the word for you. Let's stay in and under. Verse 11, when you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision the cutting away of your sinful nature. You might know that in the Jewish faith, all the males are circumcised as an outward sign of the Jews' covenant with God. An outward sign of that male to say, I, this is an outward sign of the covenant of the Jewish people with God. But since Jesus came to the earth, we live under the new covenant. Please say new covenant. We we, our foundation is the old covenant and the old covenant points to the new and the new points back to the old. And there are prophecies thousands of years before they came to pass. This Bible is perfectly cohesive, perfectly cohesive. And so understand now at salvation, Jesus removes for men and women. Jesus removes our old nature and gives us his nature. Isn't that great? We don't have to try harder, do better power up and just self-will and self-effort. That's human effort. We can never get to heaven by human effort. We get to heaven by receiving the free gift of salvation, by submitting and surrendering to Jesus, which takes all the pressure off of us because there is no one righteous, no, not one. I've sinned, you've sinned. We must come to Jesus the way that we are shown by the cross. That's the only way to heaven is to receive that free gift. And it takes away the pressure of having to do better, try harder. We can submit and surrender to the truths of this. And then we go, God, it's by your strength and help that I can forgive those who have hurt me. God, it's by your strength and help alone that I can live this God life. It is by your strength alone that I can succeed 
and I can lead my family and lead myself well and right. Praise God. So verse 12 says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. So Paul is likening circumcision in the Old Testament to water baptism in the New Testament, okay? Which is really a beautiful picture. So water baptism parallels the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Have you been water baptized, you guys? I hope you have. I hope you have. And maybe if you've not been walking with God, you need to get rebaptized. Just reset that commitment with God. Reset your heart and get water baptized again. If it's maybe you were maybe you were sprinkled as a child, but as a child you don't really know what the decision is for yourself. That's why we believe in in you making the request for water baptism. You must know. The Bible says in uh, in Matthew in Mark sixteen sixteen, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So you must believe and then say, I want to be baptized for yourself. By immersion, the way Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. So that's the why. So here Paul is paralleling the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus through water baptism. It's a very, very important thing. A very important thing to believe and be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So that's that public declaration of our faith. It's a public outward demonstration of an inward commitment. Does water baptism save you? Absolutely not. But it's an outward sign. It's an outward public sign that you have been saved and that you belong to God. Amen. Verse 13 and 14. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. See, there's that tying that with that Old Testament truth of circumcision. Paul is trying to teach the Gentiles, these new Christians, hey, your old nature hadn't been cut away. Then God made, then Oh, man, thank God for our then moment. Thank God for our then moment, that then moment when we were fully submitted to Christ. What was your then moment? It was when I was a child, my then moment, when I whew, I came to life in Christ. Then God made you alive with Christ. Hallelujah. For he forgave all our sins. He canceled, listen to this verse. He canceled the record of the charges against us. Powerful words. Verse 14, Jesus canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Praise God. The penalty of our sin died with Christ on the cross. I deserve, I deserve to be punished for my sin, but Jesus took the punishment. Jesus took my sins on his back. The stripes, how they treated him. Jesus said, no. I'm going to pay for this once and for all. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Have you thanked him today for saving you? Have you thanked him? Have you thanked him for giving you eternal life? Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. God's been so good to me. How about you? We live in that light. We are not afraid. We are not gripped by the fear that grips others. We walk in freedom, freedom to do and say and be all God has called us to do. And he is counting on us to be bold for him. Do not be a marshmallow, friends. Do not be weak in this moment. Do not be weak in this moment. Be strong and be bold in your faith. Be bold. Let your kids, let your grandkids, let your coworkers see you being bold for Christ. I am a Christ follower. I go to church. I read the Bible. Be bold in your faith. And more than anything, be bold in your love. Because God is love. And every time you do an act of love, every time you do an act of kindness, you are promoting the good guy. You are, you are building up the goodness of God. You are demonstrating the goodness of God. Every time you do something good, every time you say a word of encouragement, every time you say a prayer, every time you do good for others, every time you forgive somebody else, you are declaring the goodness of God. Every time you override what your human flesh wants and does what Jesus wants, you're kicking the devil's butt. Got that? Yes, I said that. Brent says, every time I'm doing good, I just feel like that. 
I'm, I'm taking away uh, one for the bad guy and it's going to God. See, God needs you and me. God needs you and I to do good, to fight evil by doing good, to, to, to love God by hating evil. We, we love God. And so we declare the goodness of God every time we smile instead of frown. We declare the goodness of God every time we encourage and bless and pray instead of giving up. God wants us to give it up to him and not give up here. Give your challenges to him today and never give up. Never give up. God never gave up on you. And don't you dare give up on that, that, that pre-saved loved one. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up on yourself. Some people give up on themselves. Well, I'm always going to be like this, or it's always going to be like this, or this is always going to be like, no, 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 no. Don't give up on yourself. Encourage yourself. Stir up yourself. Be good to yourself. Love yourself. You, you got to love God, then you first, and then everybody else, then your spouse and your kids. It's God and you, friend. 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 Don't give up on you. Don't give up on that difficult spouse or that difficult kid or that difficult, uh, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Anchor your thoughts, anchor your habits, anchor your life in the rock Christ Jesus. Anchor, speak it, sing it, pray it, shout it, live it. Amen. Our body is alive when we are born into the natural world. Our human mother gave you human life, but our spirit is not alive until we are born again into the spiritual world. Your spirit is dormant. It's in there, but it's not alive until the moment you accept and make Jesus the Lord of your life. Wow, from darkness to light, what a moment. What a moment, what a blessing. Verse 15, in this way, he disarmed, that's Jesus, on the cross, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Wow. Ha ha. Jesus took all, all of our sin. He took all of the people and things that try to usurp him. He took he took captivity captive. Ha ha. And we're to do the same thing. We secure victory the same way Jesus secured victory. The Bible says in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers. And authority. Friend, you're going to disarm this, the rulers and the authorities that are trying to capture your mind, that are trying to make you afraid and fearful and make you shy or make you back down or feel small. Come on. Overcome them the same way Jesus overcame them. By proclaiming the finished work of the cross, by saying, I'm alive and Jesus is alive in me. My spirit, my soul is anchored in truth. I refuse to be confused. I have no fear over here. Come on, say it with me. No fear over here. No fear over here. Do not fear anyone or anything. Only have a healthy fear of God. Let God be your anchor today, friend. No matter what challenge you face, no matter what is coming at you, no matter who is coming at you, remember the victory of the cross. You are going to win the same way Jesus won, which is to submit and surrender to the Father. See, the way up is down. The way up in the kingdom is down. To humble yourself. Humble yourself before the Lord. God, I can't do this without you. God, I need your help and strength. Lord, I submit and surrender to our Holy Spirit live through me. Electrify me. Energize me. Empower me with your words. Empower me with your truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I will. I am more than an overcomer through the name and the blood of Jesus. You got to declare these things over yourself, friend, because you know what? Laundry is going to get in the way. Trouble's going to get in the way. Kids are going to get in the way. Dogs are going to get in the way. Bills are going to get in the way. There's always going to be something or someone that wants to take you away from peace. Always. 
And so I go back to verse eight, take captive, take captive anyone who's trying to take you captive, take captive. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense. You're not going up friend. You're going down. Don't take, don't let fear take you captive. Don't let a, don't let a person take you captive except Jesus. The only one that can hold you and have you is Jesus Christ. Does Jesus have your mind today, friend? Or does fear have your mind today? Does Jesus have your focus today? Or do your bills have your focus today? Be fully captivated by the one who gave his life for you. Be fully focused on the finished work of the cross. Be fully filled with his promises in this book. Be fully alive with his truths, his promises. Get one of those promises in your mouth today, friend. Declare your victory. Proclaim your victory. And part of proclaiming your victory today is claiming it. You gotta lay hold of it, and not let it go. God loves you. And I, 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 this is the end of our study for today, but I wanna pray a victory prayer over you. We secure victory the same way Jesus secured victory. I want you to have victory today, friends. I don't want you to ever succumb to any fear, to any spirit that is an ungodly spirit. Oppression, depression has got to go in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray this right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare freedom for you today. I declare freedom over you, friend. As you proclaim the word of God over yourself, shake free today from any depression, any oppression, any sadness, any guilt, any of it. Be free today, friend, because Jesus has set you free. And the truth is what will set you free. So friend, today I proclaim that you will claim the promises of God. You will claim the promises of God. You're going up, you're not going down. You're gonna succeed, you're not going to fail. You're gonna win, you are not a loser. You are more than a victor because of the name and the blood of Jesus. So walk in it today, friend, and speak it. Don't let your words, don't let, don't let the enemy convince you to speak his lies. He's lying to you and me every day. Don't let the enemy convince you to join him in speaking worry or speaking anxiety or speaking fear or speaking lack. You proclaim the victory of God over yourself and your children. You proclaim the victory of God over this nation. You proclaim the victory of God over California today. Proclaim it. God, you're going to win. And you can trust me to get your job done in whatever city you live in. God, you can trust me to be your ambassador today. God, you can trust me to, to proclaim your truth today. God, I will fulfill my assignments today. I will bless my children. I will live for you. I will take care of this temple. I will build my life strong. I will be faithful to my church. I will tithe to my church. I will do and obey your commands. Hallelujah. Do you feel that? I feel victory for you. I feel breakthrough for you. Come up Speak higher. Speak higher. Speak God words. Think God thoughts. Proclaim God things out of your mouth today, friend. God is good and he is for you. I will sing of the mercy and the goodness of God. God loves you, friend, and I love you too. And so we pray these things. I declare them in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. That was a prayer and a profession all at the same time. <laughs> I love you so much. Hey, guys, I thank you for praying for me. I thank you for giving to Londa Lundstrom Ministries. I thank you for helping me be a loudmouth for Jesus. That's what I am. I'm an evangelist. I'm a pastor. And I'm a loudmouth for Jesus because this truth has set me free. And everyone that does it, everyone that does the word will, will have the success that this word brings. You can have it. You can do it through Christ who gives you strength. I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you soon. Please share this on your page. Uh, you can join us for prayer tonight. If you're in the Burnsville, Minnesota area, join us any Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Join us Sundays at 9.30 a.m. live or on site. 
anytime you can go back to Facebook or YouTube and watch the services, watch the worship times, usually about 30, 35 minutes in, you can go right to my message. You can bypass all the worship if you like and announcements and get right to my message. But stay tuned in. God is with you, friend. You're going up. You're not going down. God likes you. He loves you. He's proud of you. Get this word in your mouth today and do warfare. Praise is your warfare. Worship is your warfare. Worship God. When I'm done here, I'd be playing it right now, but they'll they'll cancel my broadcast because I don't have the, the rights to play the music. But man, when I'm done here, I'm going to turn the worship music back on because I'm doing some warfare for some friends. I've got two friends that are at the on the verge of life and death right now, two friends in different states. That the doctors have said there's no hope, but Jesus has the final word. I'm going to be proclaiming that they will live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. Who are you doing warfare today? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's someone who's sick. But let's do warfare together and let's proclaim the victory of God. Claim his promises and proclaim the word of God over those situations today. I love you so much and I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you for being my friend. I am here to help you live by faith. That's my assignment. I love you so much. I'll see you super soon. Bye-bye.